So these are the remains of the first hotel I ever stayed in when I visited Belgrade for the first time in 2006 and wow it's been a journey me and this city have been on since then but yeah this is the uh, former Hotel Splendid here. You can barely see that the sign still kind of exists it's covered over by stickers but it says Splendid and I stayed here on the recommendation of a friend of mine, Andre Ristich, um, who I was like very close friends with at that time living in Toronto. He was a Serb of Bosnian um, origin. And basically, <laughs> I stayed at the Hotel Splendid, right across the street from the, the parliament here and whatever this uh, palace type city hall, I don't know, building is here. Um, and basically, this was my gateway to the city of Belgrade. This was my first impression from this very central block. You know, like it's right, Terrazia is right here and um, all of that sort of central stuff. At the time in 2006, Belgrade had a much rougher vibe um, than it does now, I must admit. And I also stayed here in 2007 after I went to the Gucha Trumpet Festival for the first time. And uh, that's when I started making like actual like long-standing friends. Um, you know, I was still drinking with one of them like two weeks ago. One guy, Luca, who I met at Gucha. And um, yeah, my initial impression of Belgrade was that it was really awesome how friendly everybody was. And the Hotel Splendid, let's, let's face it, it wasn't the most uh, splendid place in the world. It kind of had, you know, those old Yugo vibes. Um, I guess kind of like I've seen some videos uh, of Hotel Yugoslavia, what it looks like now. Maybe a little bit worse. I don't remember how much it was. I think it was 18 euros or something like that. And it acted as a very um, good place to explore Belgrade for the first time. So on that trip, I remember I met lots of friends in Studensky Park, as one still can um, if you go there with beer. Um, I'm not too old for that now. I'm actually doing a meetup in Studensky Park um, on July 1st if you want to come. I'll be there with beer, rain or shine, come and uh, shake my hand. <laughs> now that this corona <laughs> thing has sort of blown over, I will shake your hand. So there's the Serbian parliament. Yep. And um, it really seemed like Belgrade was a really majestic sort of city based on coming out every morning and seeing this majestic parliament building and the whole like... Uh, Glavna Poshta over there and the churches and stuff like that. It was really good. And yeah, just the fact that I had been friends with the Serbian dude, um, really close friends, like hanging out every day the year before and then finally coming to Serbia for the first time. I'd previously like hitchhiked to Slovenia and Croatia and stuff like that. But um, Serbia seemed to be the one, Belgrade was the one that had the most sort of like... Um, WTF power <laughs> because uh, well Serbia Serbia 2006 let's say I remember the first thing that happened um, when I walked out of the main train station off the train um, where was I coming from yep Zagreb I was coming from Zagreb and as soon as I walk out the train station I go to cross the street and it was like one of those moments where you're trying to figure out if the car is going to stop or not at the pedestrian cost crossing which is still a constant negotiation in Belgrade and anyway, like, um, this super hot lady in a little car kind of almost ran me over, saw me with my backpack, and then she went, like, kind of, like, <sighs> like, hissing at me in a very sort of edgy and playful way. And I was like, it was so refreshing, you know, uh, compared to all these, like, places where everybody always wants to be so polite. And, you know, places like uh, Slovenia and Croatia where they want to be, like, you know, more like a good Austro-Hungarian European Union type citizens to have this raw Belgrade like greeting me right away and um, yeah that sort of wet my appetite for Serbia and that second trip in 2007 how much fun I had with those guys that I made friends with um, at the campsite in Gucha I also met uh, Mladen who I still hang out with uh, who was the used to be the owner of three black cats hostel so that's where all of us sort of like crazy foreign people, we go to drink with each other in a really relaxed setting and constantly meet all the different foreigners, um, hang out with the local girls that uh, <laughs> were working in the hostel as well. It was lots of fun. It was lots of fun. And that's kind of what got me into Belgrade. By the end of the trip in 2007, 
I was so hooked on the idea of Serbia. You know, I've been in the place for a total of like 10 days or something, or something like that. And I needed to come back to this city and experience more of this uh, wild, sort of energetic, hilarious, absurd life that Belgrade had to offer me. So it was at the end of, uh, at the end of 2007, I was back in Canada living my Canadian life and it was Christmas time. Um, and on Christmas day, there was a uh, party called Nijanaš Božić, um, which was a Serbian party, and they were advertising it as a Gucci style um, Serbian trumpet thing. And uh, so I went to this with my friend Andre, and we were there. Um, and I realized that this gastarbeiter, um, suburban Serbian Canadian culture that I was seeing there. And even the band that they had, way too, I don't know, sanitized and sterilized compared to the real raw Gucha festival that I had experienced here in Serbia in 2007 for the first time. And the day after that, I was just sad about it. You know, I'm like, so there's this culture in Europe where I had a time of my life visiting two times now. And I try to connect with that same culture here in Canada and it's fucking boring. The people are completely different. They've got a different mentality. They don't know how to even like have fun. It's super pretentious. It's probably not these people that suck. It's probably Canada and the sort of situations it puts them in that sucks. And so then I just decided I'm gonna move to Serbia and due to economic reasons with uh, you know my profession in IT support, I would, for three years, I was living half in Serbia, half in Belgrade, half in Canada. And during that time, I actually managed to um, make uh, cool Balkan parties uh, with cool music and cool people, cool sort of like uh, diaspora people. But it still wasn't the same as living in Serbia. So by the end of 2012, after one year in London, I'd moved here and I was basically resident here, coming and going a little bit ever since. And uh, that's roughly the story of the first time that I visited Serbia. So. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.